Agora TV. The world is thinking. Well, one thing that Darwin was very clear about was evil. And he thought about this a lot in his lifetime, both in the, in the terms of the bad things that happened to people that he loved, and also in terms of the amount of death and suffering that he saw in nature. There's a wonderful passage uh, in a letter that Darwin sent to the American biologist Asa Gray on the subject of a parasitic wasp called Ichneumonidae. This wasp uh, paralyzes caterpillars and plants its eggs inside of the caterpillars and the caterpillar is still alive. The eggs develop inside of the caterpillar, hatch, and then eat the living caterpillar while it's still alive, leaving the brain to last. So Darwin is thinking about this. So this is a truly disgusting thing that happens in nature. It's something that's happened in nature that involves great suffering. And he couldn't understand how a benevolent, omniscient, omnipotent deity could permit arrangements like this to exist. And it's not just there are a couple examples. Nature is saturated with suffering. And this is part of the problem of evil. Why is there so much evil? And you all know about this problem. It's a problem that makes some people doubt the existence of God. Other people find a way of reconciling their belief in God with the fact of evil. It's a problem we all know about just from living. You don't need the theory of evolution to think about this problem. I'll come back to that point. So Darwin says in this letter to Asa Gray that he can't persuade himself that a beneficent and omnipotent God would have designedly created this arrangement. Well, it wasn't just looking at caterpillars and parasitic wasps and lions and predators and their prey. Darwin's favorite daughter, Annie, died an agonizing death at the age of 10, and it changed his heart forever. Uh, the idea that a good God would allow this to happen, would allow this to happen, he couldn't understand this. He was very influenced by the problem of evil. Uh, it's part of what drove him, I think, from a kind of theism to an agnosticism, really doubting that there could be a being like this because of the existence of suffering. Not just a little bit, but so much. That's what made him doubt religion. Let me get to some really shocking prose in the autobiography. This is, remember, he's writing this in the 19th century. He calls Christianity a damnable doctrine. That's pretty strong language. I mean, we expect people to say that in public now. We, you know, we all hear this. But to, for someone in the 19th century to write this is really, uh, really quite something. He says it's a damnable doctrine because it says that his brother, father, and grandfather, father, must suffer everlasting punishment because they didn't believe the doctrines of Christianity. And he uses the word damnable in a way to sort of throw in the face of the religious authorities a doctrine that was very standard in the Christianity of Darwin's time and place, that people who do not believe in various Christian doctrines are damned to suffer in hell for all eternity. And this was part of the problem of evil in a way for, for Darwin. Um, how could a good God do that to the people he loved the most, who most, who many, of, many of whom were doubters, but good men? Um, that's why he, whatever his views about the existence of God, we know what he thought about Christianity. He didn't like it. 